I want to remind you guys that we have a couple key skill sets that we're developing uh, here in Coastal. And we are both focused on the content of Coastal Management and all that good stuff, but we're also, um, also developing these other skills that stretch way beyond um, Coastal. Um, well, now we have several. The, the most important ones are data visualization, right? So we're working on graphing and, and doing quantitative presentation of information in an elegant, um, engaging manner. That could be through, uh, say, um, bar charts. That could be through um, uh, map plots. It doesn't matter, but, but we're, we're honing our skills. How do I communicate this information um, elegantly, but that has a lot of depth to it and that, and that makes a, um, a clear, compelling case for what's going on? The other key cross-cutting theme is argumentation. And so when we make an argument, you need to make a strong argument. This goes for whatever we're talking about. Now, if I just asked you, you know, hey, tell me what you know about this or that, that's one thing. But <clears throat> oftentimes, you need to make a call on a management controversy. And I understand, believe me, I get it that this is hard to do. I get that it's confusing. I get there's arguments on this side and that side. But you need to be more sophisticated. Do not give me answers that say things like, well you know, there's a case to be made to be doing this, and then there's a case to be made for doing that. No. Um, you need to make uh, make a case, pick a, a decision, make a decision, and then support that decision. I get it that there are arguments on all sides and, and that there's, there's uh, you know, not always clear cut. We don't always have all the data we want, but nevertheless, we have to make a decision in the management world. Not making a decision is a decision. And so when I ask you for those types of questions, whether it's in a, a small lab write-up or it's in a, you know, a midterm or something, you should be taking the same general approach. First and foremost, a very clear and very concise, strong thesis statement. We should not be mining the deep ocean. We should be mining the deep ocean. Whatever it is, say it clearly from the get-go. Be um, crystal, crystal clear. Next, you're gonna to wanna to support that, that statement with particular arguments. So here's why I think this is the right call. This, here's why this is the correct action. So you're gonna give me a specific argument, a specific argument, a specific argument. As you note that argument, you then wanna provide specific support, numbers, um, uh, the specific finding or the specific outcome of an experiment or, or previous case study, something of that nature. Use the units be quantitative, and then once we've um, mentioned that, that information, you need to tell me where that comes from. It's totally fine to use the paper that, that was in our, our, our lab handout or something we read for class. You can use, you can always, you're always welcome to use stuff from outside of class, but the point is you, anything you do not come up with yourself, the insight doesn't come completely from you, um, the observation doesn't come completely from you, that's totally cool, but let's just cite where you got that from. And as a reminder, our in-text citations all the time, we use author and year. So in this case here, I'm, I'm showing blah, 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 made this, this, made this statement. And then I made the source. <clears throat> in this case, the source was a um, Javier and Jones paper from 2020. So I would say Javier and Jones 2020. So the author or the authors and then the year. And then... At the end of the thing you turn in, maybe it's your test, maybe it's a paper, maybe it's a small a little write-up for a lab, whatever it is, it should always have a reference section. And that reference section is where you will insert the reference according to ecology format, ecological monographs, ecological applications, same thing. According to that format, which is our default ESRM reference citation format, um, you'll insert that in and so it'll be at the bottom. Um, that's how we make a strong argument, and, and that's what I expect. That's what I want to see. Again, um, I understand it's tough, but go ahead and make the call and build a strong argument. This skill set will serve you well, not just throughout this class, but beyond.